Greetings, unsettled souls! And welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangi doing political commentary for the media speaks. And uh, as the perceptive ones of you shall notice, you will look behind me and you will now see graphics. As a matter of fact, you're going to see everything that I see. It's behind me. Thank. I told you to donate. I told you all money you give to me goes towards a better show. Behind me are the graphics that you, my faithful listeners, if you donated, paid for. Now, I'm warning you. The first person to now say that I don't give any sources are going to be called out on air. I'm going to humiliate your name on air if you tell me I don't give any sources. Why? Because I'm an asshole? Well, yeah. But also because all of my sources are here. So if you tell me that I'm not giving sources, I'm, t I'm going to call you out. I'm going to rip you a new one. I really am. Friends, uh, and this is Kurt Nemo, InfoWars. Russian foreign minister, quote, U.S. knows ISIS position in Syria and refuses to bomb. Now, this I found to be interesting because many of you know that I am, in fact, no huge Vladimir Putin fan. I'm really not. The man um, called President Obama on the 4th of July, and I'm no Obama fan either. I think Obama and Putin are the same evil. Evil Obama got a phone call from the equally evil Putin on the 4th of July and congratulated him about uh, the holiday and everything the 4th stands for and then immediately flew his war planes into our country and uh, basically risked doing what Russia always does when they do such things, flying into other people's airspace. Um, risked a, risked a an attack from us. You can't blame us for doing an attack. I mean, really, at this point, what do you do when someone flies into your airspace? So when you talk about Vladimir Putin having NATO stepping on his toes, you need to also talk about how Vladimir Putin steps on other people's toes. Having said that, when you're dealing with two evil leaderships like we are, it's worthy of note here to talk about when Russia might actually be pointing to something that is legitimate. And I think that this is. Russian Foreign Minister, it says, Sergei Lavrov said on Sunday that the goal of the United States in Syria is different than what is publicly stated. He also said the coalition led by the U.S. knows the positions of ISIS in the country and is not targeting them. What does that mean? Do you understand? Are you listening? Are you paying attention to this? This official, who we have no reason to doubt is bad at his job, he's probably very good at his job, this official is saying that America is covering for ISIS. Why would they do that? Well, there's a lot of people that have been saying for a long time that America wins in the uh, destabilization that is caused by allowing ISIS to continue as it is. And this might be something that we're seeing here. So keep in mind, I'm no huge Putin fan, but I'm paying attention to this. And I would suggest that you do as well. Lavrov told Channel One that the largest, which is the largest television network in the Russian Federation, that analysis of aviation operations in Syria creates a strange impression, and instead of fighting ISIS, there is something else which is a concern to the coalition. He said the coalition purportedly fighting ISIS has information on where exactly the positions of the terrorist army in Syria and Iraq, but does not give consent for striking them. And they're claiming uh, it's a matter of collateral damage. They don't want to um, attack because of the civilians in the area. Well, let me tell you something. Syria is no, is no uh, original victim of this. It's a tactic that has been used by people for a very long time, armies, countries for a very long time. And here's what that tactic is. You saw it uh, when Israel attacked um, the Palestinians in 2013. What they do is uh, the Palestinians will take and set up their terrorist little uh, grouping in a civilian area. That way when Israel bombs the terrorists and accidentally take out a number of civilians... It's that much more easy to blame Israel and hate the Jews and all the good stuff that everyone likes to do every day. 
point is, they put these things in civilian areas on purpose. They do it on purpose to prevent you from attacking them, and that way they can keep terrorizing you. That's why they're called terrorists. Well, we already know that only 2%, 2, 1, 2 percent of the people that die in U.S. drone strikes, and it's sourced out here, um, is a terrorist. Most other people are civilians. So if we're taking out civilians all the time to kill terrorists, then why are we hiding ISIS who are doing the same despicable things that other terrorists do and hiding in civilian areas? Could it be that we are covering for ISIS? If not, then I have a comment line for a reason. You tell me why this is happening. We have somebody now who they got boots on the ground there. Well, you know what Russia does, and Russia is saying that we are preventing ISIS from falling. And there's no reason given because America has uh, unfortunately been responsible for more collateral damage than ever dreamed possible just a generation ago. Uh, friends, this is the BBC. Who, what, and why? What is stink water? Stink water is great. I'm very happy about stink water. What they're doing when the uh, Palestinians are doing everything they can to terrorize their neighbors, but not necessarily being violent. Or, if you've got extremists of any kind, any ilk, in anywhere, terrorizing people, but they're not necessarily doing anything that would justify you shooting them or anything like that. What do you do? Skunk water. I love this. Police departments in the United States are reported to have bought a foul-smelling liquid developed in Israel to repel protesters. What is skunk and how is it used? Ask Yilalande now. Now, the thing is, I know that the American government, which is also despicable, are we clear, is going to use it against protesters. Use it against you and me. And uh, again, look up Bilderberg, why it mattered to me. You'll see the protest that I went to. However, this is better than a lot of other things that we have heard in, in terms of dispersing crowds. And what I would argue to do is if you are sprayed with these kinds of things, it looks like it's coming out there in quite a jet. I would simply collect large buckets of it as it streams away, and I would throw it on the police to throw it on you. That way they can smell like skunk water too. Anyway, I thought this was rather ingenious, and um, whether or not the police use it on us or we use it on the police, this is interesting. It is truly a putrid stench. Palestinians who have been sprayed describe it as worse than raw sewage and like a mixture of excrement, noxious gas, and a decomposing donkey. It should have been a decomposing pig. They should spray you with that. Maybe if you quit terrorizing your neighbors, they will quit spraying you with skunk water. Call it a hunch. Invented by Israeli firm Odetek, and again, I am not anti-Jew. I am anti-Zionist, but I'm not anti-Jew. Skunk water was first used by the Israeli military against demonstrators in the occupied West Bank in 08. Since then, armored vehicles equipped with water cannon spraying jets of the stinky liquid have become a regular sight. That's because Palestinians trying to bomb Israel have become a regular sight. Although it may include a gagging reflex, the company says skunk is made from 100% food-grade ingredients and is 100% eco-friendly and harmless to both nature and people. The secret recipe includes yeast, baking powder, and water, which sounds innocent enough, but the scent can linger on the skin and the environment for days, sometimes longer. Once I was trapped against the wall and covered head to toe in skunk, a Palestinian photographer says. Well, you know what? I've heard of a lot worse. And anyway, I wanted to report on this because even though I think a lot of the uh, terrorists deserve to have it done to them, we know the way this works. We know that those who stand up for liberty are going to be sprayed with skunk water. It's going to happen to you and I. And you know what? I really don't care. I mean, I do a lot for liberty anyway like today i'm probably not going to get to eat because like we come home from work and i have to get to show up and then once certain people 
a home, they sit down and don't move, and you starve to death until the next day. So a lot of times when I do the views, I haven't eaten for a day, and I'm probably not going to be eating for either a half day or a whole day afterwards. That's a lot worse than skunk water, so spray me as you will. I'm already hosed. A day, no pun intended. DailySignal.com, how the federal government is deterring the state from reforming civil forfeiture, civil asset forfeiture laws. Before we go on, what is civil af uh, af asset forfeiture? Let's say you're driving down the street and you're going to buy a new van. Well, not a new van, but it's new to you. I, I've lived this scenario, by the way. You have about $1,500 with you. You've got taxes, you've got all these papers, you've got to fill over, you're buying the van, yada, yada. A cop pulls you over. Now, this didn't happen to me, but we're going to continue with the analogy. A cop pulls you over with that money in your car as you go to buy the van. He sees the $1,500. He thinks that you may be involved in drugs, and the cop steals the money, and you never get it back, even if you prove your innocence. Does that sound fair to you? Because it's not. Does that sound like a breach of the Fourth Amendment? Because it is. And it's happening every day. The other thing I want to mention is states' rights supersede that of government dictates. Federal government dictates do not trump the states. The states trump the Fed. And any time you hear that that is disobeyed, then know that you're looking at tyranny. That is the definition of tyranny. That's not my opinion. I'm telling you fact. The federal government is trying to deter California from reforming its laws governing how police can seize cash and property. Maybe that's because California has spent like the last 60 years electing people like Jerry Brown who have done nothing but discredit the rights of people forever. And now that they want their rights back, they find out that they voted them all away. The reforms, it goes on, to the state's civil asset forfeiture laws could mean the loss of millions of dollars from a program run by the federal government. Documents obtained by the Institute for Justice show that the California District Attorneys Association has been circulating emails from the Justice and Treasury Departments confirming that the current reforms proposed to California's civil asset forfeiture laws could make the state ineligible to receive millions of dollars through the federal government's equitable sharing program. What are they doing? Basically, the federal government, much like Al Capone would do to those who wouldn't pay for protection, the federal government is saying, we're not going to give you money for things that you need if you don't give us the right to violate the rights of your citizens. That's what that paragraph means. The Equitable Sharing Program allows law enforcement to circumvent state forfeiture laws, which shouldn't happen. How do you make a program that supersedes your rights? I don't know. And it happens when they're conducting seizures of property and money. Participating state and local agencies partner with the federal government. And law enforcement agencies keep up to 80% of the proceeds from property and money seized. In other words, they decide it's theirs and they steal it and you have no recourse. In an email to Lee Carter, Santa Barbara's Senior Deputy District Attorney Melissa Nasra, legal consultant for the Treasury Executive Office for Asset Forfeiture, expressed concern about the proposed reforms to California's civil asset forfeiture laws. I highly doubt our federal government agencies can figure out whether a conviction occurred in any timely manner, NASA wrote. I'm not sure they would have the resources, desire, and technical compatibility if they were the first two. She went on to tell Carter that the legislation, in effect, takes decision authority away from the Treasury. In other words, the government is saying that it knows better than you, no matter how you vote in your state. They can steal your money, and if you try to stop them from stealing the money, the federal government will use its power to take money from you for doing so. And if you're against that, then share this video. Then call your local politician and let them know that you do not want the asset forfeiture laws to stand as they are. You don't care how much money they lose. You want this to pass.
Otherwise, I'm doing this show for nothing, people. Um, you're listening to The Correct Views. I've got three sh three stories left to get to, but I want to say before I move on, do you know the show's on Tumblr? I'm thinking about taking it off Tumblr because nobody else is on Tumblr ever. I never get any email there, but if you want to look up The Correct Views on uh, Tumblr, I'm on there. I also want to give a shout-out to Sticker Junkie. Sticker Junkie, right there. Why? Because Sticker Junkie makes some of the coolest stickers that you'll ever see. And if you let them know that you heard about Sticker Junkie from The Correct Views, these are my band stickers, uh, The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. I'll get you some. Um, tell Sticker Junkie you heard about them from The Correct Views, and you're going to get a deal on your stickers, and you're going to have some of the best-looking stickers that you've ever seen. Also, friends, look up the work of Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. Mike McLaughlin writes some of the best political commentary extant today. He's an amazing writer, he's a poet, and he's someone you're going to want to check out, so please do so, Mike McLaughlin. Friends, um, two stories to get to, right back to back here. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Which one of these do I want to do? Which one's getting the dumb D? All right, first of all, we have people that are too stupid to know which bathroom to go to. Let me, let, me, let me simplify this for you. If you were born with a penis, you are male. If you were born sans a penis, if you have no dicky bird, then you are in fact, we'll use little kid terms so that you understand here, then you will in fact be female. Now, if you were born with a wang and you feel like a girl then you're a man who feels like a girl and you need to take your girly ass into the men's room and shut the hell up about it. If you were born without a penis and you feel like a man, congratulations. You're a woman that feels like a man. Take your ass into the female bathroom, use the bathroom and shut the hell up about it. How's that? That's the correct views. But no, listen to this. High school, or high school girls stage a walkout to protest a transgender student in their bathroom. In other words, because some guy dones a wig and says he feels like he should have a vagina, that somehow means that a girl has to share her bathroom with him even when she's on her period. That is insanity. That's insanity. I'm not against having unisex bathrooms so that everybody who feels a certain way can use that bathroom. But if you choose to go to the woman's room, then the men have no place in it and vice versa. And if that pisses you off, I don't care. I really don't care because I'm still right and you're still wrong. This is from uh, the Oraz. In the middle of last school year, Leela Perry came out as transgender, or good for it. Before that, she had been living as a gay male. Good for it. But that's not who she really was. No longer was she going to pretend, Leela said. So this year, she told teachers and administrators at, Hills, at Hillsborough High School, where she is a senior, that she would no longer be content to use the unisex facility in the bathroom. Well, then you can be content to go to hell because we don't care. She wanted to be treated like other female students, including access to bathrooms and locker rooms for girls. Or maybe he's just a pervert. You ever think of that? Her decision spread quickly through the small Jefferson County School District, and on Monday morning, students at Hillsborough High School walked out in protest. During the walkout, Leela was locked in the principal's office. She said she and administrators worried about her safety. Good, get the hell out of the normal people's school, you moron. A student walkout that came at the heels of a school board meeting Thursday that drew a large crowd. Parents concerned that Leela is getting special rights at the expense of others. Most of the students at Monday's protest were opposed to the accommodations for her and a small group gathered in support. That's because they're mentally messed up too. Leela Perry, a senior and transgender student at Hillsborough High School, speaks with reporters as... Blake Childs of Farmington offers his opinion after a student walkout over Perry's request to use the girls' locker rooms. Both supporters and opponents of Perry's request turned out for the morning protest. I have sisters and brothers who go to that school, said Childs, and I don't want them to grow up like this in this wildfire. Look, it doesn't matter how you feel. Let's make it real clear. If you have a penis, you are male. And if you like having a penis in your mail, you're male. If you don't like having a penis in your mail, you are still male. Go to the men's room. 
and hush about it. We don't want to hear. If you have a vagina and you don't have a penis, you go to the woman's room. If you're happy about that, you go to the woman's room. If you're not happy about that and you wish that your vagina was a penis or you want to pretend that you are a guy inside, that is great. You still go to the woman's room and shut the hell up. How's that? Dailymail.co.uk, San Francisco Elementary School, removes boys and girls' bathrooms and makes them gender neutral. <sighs> One elementary school had decided to do away with boys and girls' bathrooms. This is now just be bathrooms. Meloroma Elementary, that is M-I-R-A-L-O-M-A in San Francisco, California, is busy doing away with its gender assigned bathrooms and uh, making them gender neutral for young students. Well, I'm sure that'll make young students on their period uh, very, very happy. I wonder how long it'll be before every guy that is uh, the fat kid in class and can't get laid decides he wants to act like he's gay so that he can use the bathroom to uh, look at girls half nude. And again, um, I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm quite the pervert. And that's probably why this came to mind. Uh, would I do that? No. Uh, but I can see where this would go. Why? Because I am, in fact, a pervert. Principal Sam Bass said the change was in part due to eight students who do not fit into traditional ninja norms. Then they can go to another school. How's that? And they range from tomboys to transgender. Again, we taught you. Do you have a penis or not? That's how you decide. Shut up. Go to your assigned bathroom. Did I mention? Shut up. The school began removing the circles, triangles, and stick figure signs from restrooms at the start of the school year. I don't have a problem with unisex bathrooms. Some idiot on here said, uh, there's no need to make them gender specific. It's just like their own house. That's a bit stupid. But okay. This is where we are now. We live in a society where we cannot decide what sex we are and we don't know what bathroom it is that we're supposed to use here at 420 in the morning. Friends, I got one more story to get to. And, of course, you know what that one story is, right? The Dumdy of the day. Let's get our Dumdy music ready. Oh, do you hear it? Listen. That's right. The Dumdy, 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 Dumdy of the day. Uh, it's on the Telegraph. Feminists are angry that Kermit the Frog's new girlfriend is young and thin. Why? Because feminazis are always, and I say always, offended by anything that does not fit their close-minded view of the world. Now, I'm not one of these Neanderthals that think that women don't get any rights or any of that BS that you think I'm getting to. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we live in a world now where suddenly everything, and I mean everything, comes down to a matter of whether or not you're offending some minority group. Now you have Muppets going through a breakup. For those of you that don't know, maybe you listen to Usher or something. Muppets are fake, okay? They're puppets. You have Muppets breaking up in order to create some media hype. That's what entertainment does. Muppets are entertainers. Their handlers are entertainers. Now I sound like a feminist. Hey, uh, it's Christelle. I just completely killed the graphics on this because I'm an idiot. Uh, I knocked it right off the table. Did you see that? Um, I can laugh at myself, too. It's fine. I'm a klutz. I'm also a pervert. We went there already. Um... Now you have feminists mad about Muppet hype. <laughs> Muppet hype is now angering feminists the world over. This is by Helena Horton. Kermit the Frog has been spotted about out and about with his new lady Denise after splitting with his girlfriend Miss Piggy last month. Now, not the Hydron Collider, not the poison coming from Fukushima. No, none of that matters to feminists. What is Kermit the Frog doing? That's what matters to feminists. I just destroyed our entire setup, Christelle. I did it all in one fell swoop, too. You guys saw me do it. And typical fat. Oh, no, now I lost everything. Now I've done it. 
see, now at least you can see what I'm seeing. See, see how that blacked out on me? See, I, I've got witnesses now. It's like a mirror behind me. Christelle, I crashed everything. In typical I'm fashion, people on track. Oh, I can get dun, a dog. Dun, dun, I've got dun, two dogs. See what I have to deal with here, friends? In typical fashion, people, I was so wrong. People on Twitter had a lot to say about Kermit's new lady. And while he denies speculation and they are romantically linked, the pictures appear to tell another story. In other words, the fictional love story of a Muppet pig and a Muppet frog is angering feminists the world over. Many have expressed dismay that Kermit Frog ditched the feminist and fully figured on his fat Miss Piggy for a younger, skinnier model, that is to say attractive, who has not yet exposed opinions on the works of Germaine and Greer or Bell Books. In other words, feminists, their biggest outrage is to whether or not the fictional Kermit the Frog is portrayed in a way that is friendly to feminists. And that's why, friends, they're getting the dumpty of the day. Friends, you're listening to the correct views. If I have pissed you off, it's because you're an idiot. If I haven't pissed you off, then it means you're right. So do me a favor and hit subscribe. We need more of us all on one channel. Uh, if you want to donate to the show, please do. You can do so at the correct views on hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show, like the graphics that you're seeing behind me. Uh, good night, friends. Thank you for listening. And all jokes aside, thank you for being on the side of common sense and for actually caring about news. Good night, friends. God bless.